if you are watching this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, click on the notification bell, and don't forget to share as well. Someone may need those words. Someone may need to know what it is about Bonmouth Uni, about UK, about studying, and what hurdle to cross. Someone may need the words. Just share. Thank you. Welcome. Would you like to introduce your name, year, course, and university? Okay. Um, thanks for having me. I'm glad that probably of all the people that online you decided to talk to me and so that I can share my experience. Oh, my name is Jennifer Enima Ose and um, a master's degree student at Bonmoy University um, with a faculty of media and communication, but I prefer to be addressed as Nana. Okay. Just to give people a clear or fair idea of my background, where I come from and all that. So, Can you say that's your university? Oh, I'm with Bonmouth University and okay. the Faculty of Media and Communication. Okay. Can you tell us your hometown? All right. Um, I'm a Ghanaian and I'm from specifically from Ashanti region, one of the suburbs in Kumasi and in Ghana specifically, and I come from Jache from, I don't know if anybody knows the place anyway. If, but I, if anybody knows, just leave a comment. <laughs> <laughs> so can you remind us of the course you're currently studying? Uh, media and communication, and my I have electives as well, but um, currently I would say it's um, one of the um, disciplinaries of um, journalism. So basically you learn about what's, ongoing with the media industry, what is existing and what intend to come in the near future. Why did you choose your course? Well, yeah, that, that's a good one there. Um, growing up, I had this um, passion to be at the public sphere, not necessarily for the fame, but to educate people about a few things that I think they need to know. And I realized that, um, Back in the days, the media industry was just something that people do for fun, not um, really looking at the implications that their lives as figures, public figures, would have on their audiences. So I had this passion of being there and try to change a few things my way. I have this um, kind of, um, I wouldn't say policy, but kind of a, um, a principle that if I start to change something that I don't want to see in my world, it starts with me. It starts with the person next to me. It starts with my family. And, and eventually we will get to the world. So it's a passion to educate people and to be at the forefront, probably just so what is not being done right, you do it. Yeah. How long have you been on your course? Together with my undergrad, I would say it's been um six years long journey now what have you thought about your course so far wow um initially i thought journalism was all about certain looking all good or glammed or made up in front of cameras and reading the news a few years into the program i realized that it's not just about that is more of what you want to know around you and what you want people to know. What do they know and what you think they don't know, but you need to tell them, mm. not in a way that will affect their well-being, but in a way that will add up to whatever they are doing. I realize um, this course is, again, not just about reading or not just about writing or not just about editing the news for people to read, but it's about having a sense of inclusivity and diversity as well. Okay. So if we now get into the uh, kind of the way in Ghana it worked for your subjects, did you, could you tell us the structure of studying and then, did, did you, did, were you born in the UK or were you born in Ghana? I was born in the um, not in the UK, but in Ghana. I, I was born and bred in Ghana. So that means you came over for your course. Exactly. 
So when you were in Ghana, how, what's, what did you have to do to get, obviously, because in the UK we do A-levels and uh, GCSEs and the, that's how I do. In Ghana, how does the structure work for applying to the UK and having the right requirements to study in the UK? Okay, I would say um, based on every institution and their um, entry requirements, but to be on a program in the UK, whether it's an undergrad or um, a master's degree, if it is an undergrad, you have to be out of the what we call um, West African um, secondary school um, examination, where you have to get your A's right. It's, it's basically something that we would say is as compared to the um, GCSE, what UK you do here. Mm. Yeah, you will be on the um, whatever program that you would want to study for three years. Currently, it's three years. Then um, after the three years, if you have good grades, then you jump onto an undergrad, which um, is the same with the same entry levels for UK as back home. So, um, but with a master's degree, depending on the year gap, some schools you can waive off um, the IELTS requirements, which you have to set for the English um, proficiency exams or whatever it is. But back home, after mm -hmm. right after right after school, you jump onto a uni course. Whether you want to further, you want to do your master's or PhD, you are not required to write any IELTS exams or what um, GRE what um, the Americans or Canadians um, require for mm. to be on their courses. In here, some schools do not waive it off, especially my current university, you would have to meet a certain requirement, which we call the um, conditional offer, which you, if you are able to get your IELTS right, you get on it. What do you think the best subjects are for your course? Well, I'm beginning to love every unit. Initially, I was when I was choosing the um, unit, you know, you choose the unit before you start mm. in September. And when I was choosing, I was like, what are these courses? I just want to be a communicator. I just want to be a journalist. I just want to be in the industry, in the media industry. What are all these courses? Going forward, I've realized those courses, one way or the other, was useful. Okay. I have about seven units and each of them in their own way is bringing pieces together, some, some form of pieces together to make sense in our current generation, to make sense going forward, to make sense years to come. So it's not just about what I like, it's about what am I interested in. What you like can be Yes, you like your airports. Yes, you like your laptop. But after liking them, what use can you make of them? Mm. Okay. Because for me, it's not just about liking the course, but after the course, after the program, after I am, I've graduated into the world out there, what am I going to do differently with the course that I learned, with the uni that I was on? What okay. did it tell me about life? What did it literally... Use, actually use it exactly a quick meal for some of the courses just as i said i did them last year and even before the program the unit um ended the semester ended i was so confused about what i was trying to do what at all am i on here for but going for, just as i said is all making sense piece by piece piece by piece so i would say i love my program there are ups and downs, though, but so far, so good. I'm mm. liking, I'm loving. In fact, liking is underestimated. I'm, I'm loving the course because I feel each and every one has an embedded um, reason for it, an embedded passion that when you step out there, it will not only get you into the usual line of, oh, after school, I want to work. Oh, after school, I want to do this. No. It literally builds you up for what is, is, is actually ahead of you. Okay. If we now go into what it was like to study, if we first start about if we first start on the international college, when you first came to the UK, 
um, obviously you have to go through the international college and then your undergrad and step by step. What was it like going through the international college? The best and worst thing, starting off with the worst. Whoa, best and worst things. <laughs> um, that question is a good one there. Worst things. Have you ever traveled to a place where before you, you, you started your journey, you were so much in love to, you, you were looking forward to explore and okay. suddenly the joy leaves you and you want to rush back to your comfort zone. That is could what you, happened to me. Could you expand on what you mean, sorry? <laughs> that is what literally happened to me. So back home, it's such a pleasure because mm. it, it, it exposes you and for you to um, explore the world, not to be within your space and be comfortable about what you know, but you okay. have to be with others from other countries or probably other cultural background, other background to just so you can know what is, it is to be in their shoes. Similar surrounding. Exactly. I was all happy, all joyous, the kind of happiness, joy within, okay, I'm going to the uni, I'm joining the uni. And this time is not just my home country, I'm traveling, I'm going to have international friends, international connections and all that. Then I got in here within a week that I, I, I started classes. Okay. I literally ran back to my room, straight to my washroom and started crying. Oh. I cried out. I want. I just didn't have the feel what I was looking forward to. Okay. I, I, I felt like I am in a different world, although I'm there. I'm there to learn. Mm. But social life also matters. It was just like just you alone. Unfamiliar. Going back, going to class from class to your room, nothing to do not to talk to anybody so I think the first few months it was quite stressful naturally I'm not a person I'm not really an extrovert okay so initially I didn't see that coming I I I I I presume it was just going to be the usual things the usual way that the usual life that I'm used to and suddenly the same person is crying out because life feels like different so so different i was so much caught up in the world of the uk i was so much caught up and i really wanted to run back and the good things that i've learned over the years is you don't grow in your comfort zone even as you are born and bred in a place that you think others are looking at okay is the western world yeah it is there is good things in there there are good things there are good places to learn from but you don't you don't you don't really grow if you were born in manchester you don't really grow in manchester and as expect yourself to expand thinking manchester is all that england had no mm. so stretch your territories make sure you are making use of the opportunities any challenges there have been a lot of challenges i would say not doing so well on my courses i had a, i had to burn candles i had to literally stay up at night just to dedicate myself for good grades and all that those are all the challenges i wouldn't have ever thought of doing that even though I would, I had the dreams of federal my education. I never thought I was just going to sit and cross my legs and just watch my grace skip up, skip up, skip. I had to sit down and learn. So through it all, it has been sort of the joy to get to a height. You don't stop climbing when you've not reached your height. You keep mm. on climbing, irrespective of what is thrown out your way. COVID has thrown a lot of things out of my way. Literally at a point I felt I'm running into depression, but because I was just stuck eight, 10 hours within two, three days and you are stuck behind a computer, just mm. nodding your head up and down. This wasn't what I signed up for. This wasn't what I planned for, but mm. this is what life is giving me. What do you do? You set up, make lemonade out of the lemons thrown your way okay 
so obviously you just mentioned some of the negative things that was like when you first started when you first came over and started studying at the international college what were some of the good things about studying when you first came the good things about I would say my first year in the UK is I got to know a lot about education itself. Okay. Could you expand on what you mean, sorry? Yeah, um, each and every country or probably even universities have a way of um, getting their, um, getting students to attain marks, to learn and all that. What we do in Africa is totally different. Okay. Our system of education and the system of education in the UK are two parallel lines. And at first, it wouldn't be easy for you. Just as I said, you came here for education and you came to study not to fail. You came here to study so that you can advance whatever field you find yourself in, whatever career aspirations you have, you have to advance. It was tough, really, really tough. Okay. Our way of studying was set, being taught and read back. Okay. So in kind of just, I tell you, and then you listen. Yes. The system is changing gradually, which is a good thing. But here, plus the COVID, you do your research, you present the essay as an assignment. Mm. Two different worlds. How do you survive within them? <laughs> the good thing was the zeal. The what, sorry? The zeal, the passion to, okay. to advance. Oh, so like the uh, people wanted it more and done more work and kind of you, there's more energy when it comes to doing the work and trying to finish in the research. Yes. So nothing can really take away the experience of meeting people, your lecturers and having a sense of belonging. That is the word, a sense of belonging. Although you feel you are part of a class when you are on Zoom, the virtual learning space and everything. However, mm -hmm. it is different when you enter a seminar hall and you notice a lot of people, 100 plus, 50 plus, 300, and you are all in the same room and you are all learning, you are all on one course. That gives you a sense of belonging a sense of feeling. Unlike the virtual space where you are just maximum of 20, maximum of 30, that is not even a seminar, that is even um, an exhibition or whatever. That takes a lot from you as a person. You can easily run into the negative. What if I feel, let me feel, nobody is actually looking. Nobody mm. actually cares. But the lecturers, it, they might not be as, they may not be appear as caring as you think, but they do care. Nobody, no lecturer wants you to come out with a feel. Mm. It dance badly on their reputation as well. Mm. Everybody wants you to pass. Irrespective of they trying, no matter how someone push you up a ladder, if you don't take a step to push yourself up, they will push you a slight look away from your end. You are gradually going to fall down. Okay. Law of gra gravitation is going to fall on you. It's going to push you down to where you started from. It's not easy. I wouldn't say I've encountered a lot of roses along the line. Okay. Even though... I know and I believe there would be more roses as I go forward. But what I'm saying is the lemonades that came my way taught me a lot of things, how to use them, how to walk my way around it, how to pass through certain tunnels, where even though to the outer space of the world, there seems, no, there seems not to be any space through it. That is perseverance. Okay, so if we now go into your undergrad slash masters, 
all the best and worst things about studying at Bournemouth University as your undergrad and master's after you finished the initial first year? Oh my goodness. Mm. The worst things is that at a point I feel like um, people were being discriminative not just the, not necessarily the staff, the best supportive staff that I've ever met in this season, I would say comes from Bon Martini. Okay. People, my colleagues, that was the worst thing. I've, bon Mothi, being at Bon Martini have taught me a lot of things. And one of them, it's not to take negativity out of every situation. No matter what it is, I would try to pluck the positivity out of that tree, out of that fruit, instead of look at the negativity out of it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really looking at those negative, those worst moments that came my way, where I'm, being, I'm not being chosen for certain group studies, I'm not being responded to even if there is a question to be answered. Those who ask the questions react as if they've not heard you, as if you don't even exist. That was really, I would say, a challenging moment. But through it all, I've learned to create um, an environment for myself where everyone is heard. Okay. Where if I'm if I find myself in a group where they are not that tolerant, they are not supportive, what if I stand up all by myself to be supportive to those people that have been rejected? Okay. So the worst thing is having a feeling that you are being rejected, you are not being chosen because of your culture. Yeah, you are. Because of yeah. your power, because of that is heartbreaking. Mm. And the good things are what I've learned out of those situations. I've learned to let things be the way they want to be and work on the things that I can change personally as a person. Mm. You can't instill values into people. Mm. You can't instill principles into people. You can only set them for yourself. You can only set principles for yourself. What are you living as a person? What are you living by as a person? What kind of prince are you going to live with people? Mm. When, I when, when I chose to focus on the prince that I want to live with people instead of what they are living with me, mm -hmm. it has not gotten to me that much. Okay. I've learned to move on from the worst part of not for people being discriminated, for people being selective with me, mm. because of my color, because of my culture, because of my background, and focus on who is choosing me for me, mm. who is accepting me for me, and what am I going to do to impact into those lives that has accepted me for who I am? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So if we're now going to um, where you stayed, so obviously as an international student, you'd have to find your own accommodation. Where did you stay when you first arrived in your first year? Okay, um, good for me. Um, I had to be at the student accommodation. So that was a plus on there. They've been good. Can you tell us the name? Come again. It has the name of the accommodation. Um, it was last done point by currently as um, Kaplan leaving Bournemouth. Okay, that's fine. So, what was it like living there? You would definitely have a, a mixed feeling living with people that you are trying to get to know, and others are being selective. Okay. The management as a whole has been good. They are supportive throughout the COVID season. Although every certain, every institution or every organization would have their management rules and principles that 
would not always go the way you want it. Okay. But just as I said, they existed before you came in. Mm -hmm. And you existed because they are working. Mm. They, their work is actually moving on. You are because they are. They, are, they, they, they don't exist as a, an accommodation entity, as an accommodation organization, if you don't rent their rooms. They've tried their best. Just as I'm saying, it's almost 15th floor building. Mm -hmm. and, um, with so many rooms, a lot of students from different backgrounds, different upbringing mm. and all that. They can't please us all. Mm but they are doing their best. Okay. And in your second year? I'm still with them. So you stayed with them the whole time? Yes, I've stayed with them the whole time. And um, looking for accommodation, I would say in Bournemouth is not easy. Okay. And um, I'm not being, I'm a bit selective with what I do. So um, moving out on my own was way expensive. I, I needed to be with at least a friend or two. And unfortunately, my friends were also changing cities and all that. So I couldn't be with them. So I had to, to have a, 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 a peace of mind or a, a sense of sanity where I, I, can, I can really grow in my environment. Hmm. I had to stay with them. I had to renew my contract with them. Okay. So you wanted that some, some sort of familiarity. Would, what would you say made you want to stay with aside from obviously being somewhere firm of obviously where you first came and you feel familiar with it so anything else that you kind of liked being there that kept you there for well, the uh, prizes okay one, and security wise okay I, I i knew i am way protected because so safe yes because um before you gain access into the building you don't, you need to go through a lot of process, mm. which I know before anybody gets to my room, it is through the administration, it is through the management. So mm. I'm, I'm okay. I have a sense of peace. I don't need to sleep or leave my house and be worried. What if someone comes in? What mm. if my door is not locked? What if my window is open? What if someone is going to disturb my peace? Mm. And I, 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 I weigh the pros and cons of it all and realize if I have to move out of the building and have to live in a private accommodation, when I have issues with security, when I have issues with bills and all that, it wouldn't be sorted as I am with the whole management that I know as a beneficiary, there are a lot of things that come my way. Mm. So that was it. My safety, my Pardon? peace of mind, my safety, oh, safety. My peace of mind, and the sense of belonging. I, I think we, within my first apartment, my first flat, um, there were people that we were so close. I knew people, like we, we became close. We became like family. They were Chinese, Asians, and all that. So. I loved it, not knowing I was going to change rooms. I was going to ch um, be changing rooms, but all through it, it has also been good. But firstly, safety first, and my okay. sense of sonic, my, my sense of peace. You don't need to worry about who is coming in late at night, who is making noise. So there is a certain kind of restrictions within the student accommodation, people say, but those restrictions actually give me that kind of safety or that is what I comfortability of just mine I define as safety because you don't have to worry about okay your neighbor is playing music at the last volume disturbing you at nine during the day and all that no there is nothing of that so there are measures to check all these things yeah okay so if we now going to you as an international student obviously you talked about when what it was like for some discrimination obviously and um, when you first came over it was a bit uncomfortable for students back in Ghana who are curious of what it's like to be in the UK what could you tell them as, what is what is it like being an international student in the UK aside from what you mentioned before 
who know what you want. Know what you want. Why are you here? What do you after? Don't just have the zeal. Don't just enjoy the moments or the, the, the kind of happiness that comes with the feather, the love. Pe literally, people see studying outside their home country as a luxury. That is what people think. Even here in the UK, those born and bred in the UK and those, if they are in Bournemouth, they will literally not choose one more university. They would want to be at any other prestigious university in the UK. If you don't know what you want, changing your environment won't help you. You'll be reluctant enough. So what I will say to Ghanaians mm -hmm. or potential students mm -hmm. or potential, I would say, um, those who are looking forward to switch countries, irrespective of from your reasons, if you really have a, a hold of what is driving you to that destination, you don't lose focus. It is easy to lose focus health-wise, business-wise, um, even social life. Okay. You have to be in a position where balancing all this, your time around all these things, you'll be so good at it. Not just the mere fat or the mere joy of, oh, I am traveling to the UK. Oh, I am traveling. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to enjoy life. Yes, life in here is enjoyable. Everybody is enjoying life. Of course, nobody is out on the street crying. I am not enjoying my life. How you enjoy it depends on you. Mm. Okay. How you make it depends on you. So if you are willing to travel abroad for reasons, for educational reasons, know what you want. Know what you are running after. Know what you are set for. Don't just let the mere fact of um, exploration or being having that international connection strip you of your feet from what you really are in here for. Be up and doing. Get all up and get it all done. Get your life balanced. The career life, get it balanced. The social life, get it balanced. The educational life, get it balanced. Else depression sets okay. in and you'll be moved away you will pass away like an advertisement 30 seconds and it's all gone it's all short what general advice would you give to Ghanaians wanting to study you kind of said it already so we'll, we'll, we'll change that question what general advice would you give to students wanting to study at university Being at the university is fun. It's another level, or I would say a hurdle that anybody that wants to attain, um, to climb the academic ladder would have to cross. Mm. Some will cross it within 30 seconds. Others will cross it within hours. The most important thing is you are both crossing that head up. Make your own enjoyable. Make your own a remarkable, set a, a remarkable record for yourself. You are not in competition with anybody at the university. You are there to be better than what you were years back. You are not to compete with your colleagues. You are to do your best, do better, do better than yourself. Being at the university, you think you have it all until you, you realize that your, your grades are dropping, dropping off and off and off and off and you'll be a spell. That is the 
less than I would ever wish anybody. And again, it comes back to what you really out there for. If you are studying accounting, if you are studying accounting, or if you are on another course, engineering course, at the end of the three years, at the end of the one year, at the end of your um, three to four years PAD, what do you want to become of yourself? If you have this thing at the tip and at the back of your mind, it's just through all the things that will come your way through all the challenges, you would not either be moved from the main goal of getting there. You would rather push through. Yeah. Okay. What advice would you give to students wanting to study at Bournemouth University? That's a good question. Be ready to learn, 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 learn. <laughs> Yeah, be ready to know something for yourself. Okay. And finally, what advice would you give students wanting to study your course at university? Communication, media and communication. It's not just about the being at the studio and having all cameras set on you. Communication is your way of living with the people around you. What you are going to be on, the course that you are going to learn, are you ready to change the way you live, even live with your family? It's not going, I'm not going, I'm not saying that it's going to impact your life in a way that suddenly you are all to yourself, you want to, you, you are being selfish or anything, but Media and communication, I would say, be ready that it will work on you. It will work. The only thing that I've noticed that um, my course, media and communication is not changing is my temperament. It's working on every other aspect of my life. Be ready for that. It's fun. It's just like any other course. You would have to enjoy it, even if everybody is saying it's not enjoyable. At the end of the day, again, it is your hurdle that you have to cross. You have to jump over it. However you get to the other side, nobody cares. All that they care is at the end of the day, you are at the other side and they know you've crossed the hurdle. Okay. So if we now go into your decision when deciding to study in the UK, what made you want to study in the UK versus back in Ghana? Um, UK, I chose the UK because um, it's one of the globally recognized um, country that has prestigious universities as well. So um, when I decided to further my education, if not in my home country, then it should be a place where whenever you are out there, you are not only there to compete within your local means. Globally, you need to be accepted. You need to be recognized. And I realized one month uni was one of the leading universities in my field of study, that is media and communication. I was drawn to the UK based on their facilities, based on their history with media and communication course, and knowing that whenever I, one day, whenever I'm out there to the world, I wouldn't have to worry showing where I came from or where I gained my skills, my academic skills from. Is one more university, and I don't need to explain myself to a whole bunch of people where or what is that school? Yeah, you don't you don't need to talk much to be accepted. Mm. That is the word. You don't need to literally waste your breath convincing people. Yes, I came from here. Oh yes, I came from here. No. 
the fact that if it's Canada, if it is UK, if it is America, if it is wherever that you think your field of study has a leading, has a, the country has a leading um, universities that you can join, so be it. Don't limit your, your search to just a, because of a place. Just look at it from this way. In my field of study, what are they doing there? What is the country offering? What is that school bringing out to the world to contribute to the world of career, to contribute to the world of that industry that I want to join? I know medical schools in Ukraine are known best for their medical schools, institutions. Mm. Why then do you, I don't want to be in the, I don't want to be in Ukraine or I don't want to be here because of the name. No, at the end of the day, when you hold your certificates up high, you don't need to explain yourself too much to people because at the mention of Ukraine, everybody knows, oh, he or she went to Ukraine medical school. Okay, I know, I now understand. It's accepted. Okay. So... Could you tell us more about your Instagram? What you do, what you post, and what it's about? Currently, because of um, academic deadlines and all that, all my activities on Instagram has been put on hold, but life still goes on. <laughs> life is still going on, yeah. So I'm um, more of um, health, more of health and nutrition, on my Instagram page and um, I am so much fascinated about health. I used to have challenges with my health and I know family members or I know there are certain health related traits in my family that I don't want to carry on with me forever and ever. And when I made the decision to take care of my health, it will rather reverse some of them. I, I, I got stuck with that to work on my health, my weight, and my nutrition. And I did all these things through um, self-learning and other um, online institution for health and nutrition. And here we are today. So it's necessarily about what you have to do to probably lose weight, and um, the kind of lifestyle that, or the kind of foods that you need to go for and what not to choose from naturally, or what to, no food is, not to, to, don't get me wrong, no food is a demon, but even good foods that are consumed in essence tends to be bad. Okay. You know, it's just about health and health and nutrition. That's all about my page on Instagram. And what is the name of your Instagram? Na underscore gets fit. So N-A-A underscore G-E-T-S-F-I-T. Yeah. At this point, I let students have what I like to call a free-for-all. You can say what you want about what you like. You can give advice. You can say something smart. You can say something dumb. Literally, the floor is yours. <laughs> All that I would want to tell other students out there is whatever you set your mind on to do, don't be moved by circumstances. Don't be moved by the challenges that come your way. And don't think you are the only one going through it. Others are going through it too. But what makes your case different is that you are not talking to anybody. If you are willing to talk to anybody, don't even think about what if they tell another person. Yes, we live in a world that when your words are out there, you can literally be tagged with it. It can literally increase your depression. It can stress you, it can push you into, it can traumatize you health-wise and even personality-wise. But at the end of the day, find a trustee, talk to the person, we are not living in normal times for you to live on your own. If you need whatsoever, I always would say this, I may not have it all, 
but I am willing to be the arm that you can just switch your shoulders onto, your head onto, and cry. When you are done crying, you can talk to me. I want to be the hand that stretches out that wherever you are, if only I have means to help you, why not reach out? It is the best thing that you can do, talking to someone. I don't need you to be a friend and I don't need you to be my skin color. I don't need you to understand my language. I don't need you to have the same temperament. All that I need to do is for us to have a sense of communication so that you wouldn't be in a world of your own. You need to be with people. You need to talk to people. And whenever you feel like talking to people, just, I hope my um, details will be in the description um, down, down the, in the description below. Just reach out in whatever way that I can help you with. Don't hesitate to talk to me. I will do my, I promise I will do my best. I promise. I will do Amazing. Best. If you are watching this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, click on the notification bell, and don't forget to share as well. Someone may need those words. Someone may need to know what it is about Bonmothini, about UK, about studying, and what's hurdle to cross. Someone may need the words. Just share. Thank you. And I'm plugged in. And I'm plugged in. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. <laughs>